my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have some wall decor we're going to be working on and the first one is going to be using these metal wall tins that I got. I have to thank Cheryl from Farmhouse Frugally. I'll leave a link to her channel down in the description. She did a video project on with using one of these tins and I went on Timu to see what I could find and I certainly found a bunch. I'm showing you my haul of all the different ones that I picked up. I'll leave a link to Timu and the tin signs down in my description box and pinned to the comments down below. I'm going to take one of these and use that in this first project. So I've picked up this picture frame from probably the free area at my dump. And I've been waiting for my tins to get here so that I could use them with this frame. So I took it all apart, wiped it all down, and then I'm going to give it a good sand on both of the parts, the uh, frame itself, and then that inside four panel frame part that's in there. You're not going to be able to see the whole thing, but I'm going to sand it all down and paint it all the same in case somebody decides to take this apart and use the frame the way it was originally intended. So then I grabbed some of my green DWIL wood paint and I'm going to give both of these pieces two coats of the paint. So now I'm going to take my Elmer's glue. This is an old bottle of Elmer's glue you could use. Uh, it's just school glue. You could certainly use the store brand or whatever you have. You can use Mod Podge as well. That works. Uh, but I have this school glue that I've had for a long time, so I wanted to use some of it up. So I shook it up really well because it kind of separated from sitting around a while. And I'm going to add it to my picture frame. Now the size of the cracks that you want, I'm going to do a crackle effect. So the size of the cracks you want depend on how much glue and paint that you put on your piece. So I'm going to do a thin coat and it's going to give me small crackle. So if you want a thicker, deeper crackle, you'll definitely want to put it the glue on thicker and the paint on thicker. And then when it uh, goes to dry it'll separate and make the bigger cracks these I just want smaller ones I just want a little bit of uh, some texture on the inside part of this frame not the edge of or the outside I'm going to leave that just the way it is and I just want a little bit of texture so that when I go in with my antique wax or black wax or whatever I decide to use it'll go down in some of those cracks and it'll give it a little bit of a distressed aged look. As you can see as I put on the paint I try not to overwork it. I try not to push down too hard. I let my brush glide over the top of it and get it all filled in the best that I can without mixing in the glue and the paint together. Now you could just set this aside and let it dry and it would crackle all on its own, but I love watching it happen. So I use my heat gun and I just use it carefully and not to get too, too close and you know leave it on one spot for too long. And I just, just sit there and watch it crackle. So once that's dry, I'm gonna take my antique wax and go over just where I had done the crackle effect on this frame. I want the to wipe it back and have that crackle effect have the wax down inside. So I'm going to uh, just keep wiping that back. I, did, I didn't like the really dark, dark part of it. So I did take a wet or damp paper towel and went back over my antique wax and that lightened it up quite a bit. It left some of it uh, on the frame and which is what I wanted and then I went ahead and took some black paint and I'm just going to go around the edges and give it a little bit of distress using just the paint 
And this is also going to bring out some of the dark qualities in the metal picture that I'm going to put on inside of this. So I just wanted all the pieces to look like they go together and uh, this black paint's going to help do that. Once that was dry and I got it the way I liked it, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. So this is the metal sign that I'm going to put inside the frame and I'm just going to add a little glue to the corners and glue that down. That should be enough to hold that in there, I hope. And this will look really cute in that distressed frame. So I like it now that it's together, but I want to give it a little more rustic look. So I'm going to add my jute rope to the outer edge of my metal sign. So I'm going to do it right on the inside there, and I'm going to go around, I think I went around three times, and filled it up all the way to the edges. So went from the edge of the frame all the way to the edge of the metal sign, and I think this came out really, really good. Last but not least, I'm going to take some of these little metal pieces and I'm going to put them in the corners where there are holes to hold up the little sign. So they will cover them up and also add another little rustic touch to this beautiful little sign. Got another little salvage piece from my local free area at my dump. It's a sign, a best friend's sign. And I need a sign for my vendor booth. I have two of them and I need one. I actually need two, but I want to do one today. And I want to use this little sign here. I thought this would be uh, nice to use where it's wood and distressed and I like the slats on it. It was a little bit loose so I just gave it a little bit of, uh, took it apart, gave it a little glue on that top part and a little, a few nails, nailed that in so that it would stay and this uh, is a nice sturdy sign so once I did that. Once I get that little guy all together I just took some sandpaper and sanded down the words on the front. I didn't totally get rid of it because I am going to paint over it and I'm going to use this folk art paint. This is new paint that my friend Tracy found. It's folk art one and it's an acrylic paint and it's a uh, paint and a uh, sealer in one. So you want to make sure if you get that you stir it up really good so that everything's all stirred up together. Now I picked this one up at Michael's and I have seen it on Amazon, but they want like double for it on Amazon. I believe it was $8.99 and then I had a 20% off coupon. So it worked out really well. I got this color and two other colors. I got black and a burgundy. So while that was drying, I dug out my Cricut that it was so full of dust and just I haven't used it in so long. Uh, wiped it all down and made a stencil that said repurpose my way i just did each word separately and i just laid it down once my sign was all nice and dry i just laid it down and 
got that positioned so that I can uh, stencil that with some black paint. I'm gonna use black. And I didn't paint the sides of the sign and it was a gray. So later on, I'm going to take a uh, stamp and I'm gonna stamp some like crackle areas on there as well with some gray so that I'll bring the gray around from the sides into the picture as well. So as you can see here, I'm using the textured stamp from IOD Textures, I think it's called. Uh, and I'm just using that to add a little bit of more distressing, some more age to my sign. So this is in a gray color. I think it's from Apple Barrel maybe. And I just wanted it to match the sides of the sign and I thought a different color would help make everything pop a little bit, give it some dimension. So once everything was dry, I went back and sanded, paying special attention to the cracks, the sides, the edges, things like that, and just went heavy on the distress. I then found another stamp that I wanted to use, a little flower to add some color, and the Folk Art One Paint in Burgundy. And I added that to my flower stamp, and I'm going to just put that lightly in spots just to give it a pop of color and so it doesn't look so plain and but I still want it to be distressed so I just went lightly with it just kind of uh, gently pushed down on it and then that all came out pretty good and gave it a good pop of color. This might be my favorite salvaged piece that I got from my local free area at my dump. Somebody had left this clock and I thought this is so cute with a little bird on it. The um, top was not glued on very well so it was kind of falling apart and it, but it worked. I put a battery in it. It worked just fine but I thought it's very plain and kind of outdated so I thought it would add something with a bird theme and look a little bit more updated and cute to put in your home. So we're going to do a little makeover on this clock. I started by taking the clock glass and outer ring off and now I'm gonna take out the components on the inside and I'm just gonna line them up how they go back. So everything is lined up. If you can see up in that left-hand corner, I have the battery holder and all the little motor and all that and the washers and everything is all lined up how it goes back together and that's how I'm going to remember how to do that because if I had just thrown it in a pile don't ask me how I know but I would not get this right <laughs> uh, so now I'm just going to use the glass to cut around this paper now this is from Tim Holtz it's called aviary I believe uh, and it's on Amazon. I will have a link down in the description for it. I've used this many times before in the past. I love this paper, but all I did was use the glass to cut out the circle so I knew the size, and I cut it a little bit smaller than the glass that was on there, and I just got it just so that it would fit right in there. So when I used my Mod Podge, it was lay right down nice and flat, and it worked out very well. I need to paint the face of the clock so that it doesn't come through the paper that I'm going to put on top. So I have the Folk Art 1 paint in the color Farmhouse White and I'm going to paint, I think I used, I did three coats on this because of all the writing and everything. I 
had to do it that way. Now I could have tried and popped out that cardboard that was in there, but it there were two holes that went right through to the back and they were pretty good size, like half dollar sized. And if I had taken that cardboard off, it would have uh, left the holes in there for the clock uh, paper once I put it on. It wouldn't have anything to hold it in there. So I thought at least the cardboard face on this would hold it in there really well. So that's why I did that. So I did three coats on the paint and I touched up the edges because I got a little bit of paint on the edges because I'm a messy painter. And then once it was dry, I went back and added Mod Podge and now I'm adding my paper. So I'm just doing this in sections, a little bit of Mod Podge at a time, not too much, and trying to get that centered on there. And because I didn't do a super great job getting it centered, it or even cut, uh, it's really hard to cut circles perfectly. So I had to come up with an idea. Once I sealed it in with my Mod Podge, I came up with an idea to take jute rope and go around the outside edge of the paper that I did so that I could uh, cover up any of the imperfections of me cutting out the paper and I decided I would use this jute rope to go once around the outside of the clock and cover up the the raw edges on the on the paper and that seemed to work really well and got rid of any problem areas that I had there they weren't huge area you know huge problems but it, it just didn't look quite finished off to me so this gave it a more finished look I think I picked up a clock kit from Walmart in the craft section and I needed the numbers off there because they had painted over the old ones because it was just printed on paper. Uh, I decided because they were gold I thought black would look better. I thought they were getting lost in the picture and you couldn't see them very well. So uh, black kind of stood out a little bit better. It also matched the frame and I thought that would work better. So I painted them black and then sealed them. I'm just showing you here my process of making sure I put this back together correctly. Up at the top you'll see I had the battery compartment and then the washers, the nut, and then the hands and I made sure I put them all back in the order that they came off from. And then before I put anything else on I made sure that it worked and then I added the glass and the rest of it. And this is how it came out. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it is. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. It could be thrifting, upcycling, thrift flips, repurposed items. It could be salvaged items like it was today from my local free area. And you never know what you're gonna catch when you watch one of my videos. So. Don't forget, go ahead, go down and subscribe, like the video, and make sure you check out this next one on your screen. I know you're going to love it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.